Okay. So, uh, if we open up Leon Kennedy rig, or uh, this file here, as everybody knows, this is um, the uh, character from Resident Evil. The uh, Leon, Leon character. Yep. And uh, so, uh, we're going to be doing a, uh, a skeleton and control setup for if you were making a first person shooter game. And if you're making a first person shooter game, um, you know, games are, games are all about like memory and how much memory there is in the game and you know, you want to make it as fast and efficient as possible. And in a first person shooter game, you're only really looking at like a hand, a pair of hands, realistically. So. I mean, realistically, you only really need, you know, a mesh kind of up to, like, the shoulder and stuff. But I just had this in here because, um, because, uh, I, I don't know, I just, I didn't chop it up or anything. But if you wanted to make it more efficient, technically you could chop off the lower torso and just basically keep, like, the upper torso. But essentially, when you're looking at a, a first-person game, you're looking out of the camera, you know, you've got something like this, where it's like a hand out of the screen. Um, so, so we've got Leon here in his his upper torso, and then in another file, <coughs> you guys don't have to open this up. Uh, in weapons, we've got his shotgun, and uh, weapons in in first-person shooter games and and really any game uh, weapons have weapons are rigged just like uh, just like characters so weapons are considered weapons and vehicles are considered characters as well um, they have rigs in them and everything and we are actually um, they have their own animation sets and everything just like a character and um, uh, the way you do it is uh, we're gonna keep these files separate we're gonna keep the shotgun rig separate and we're gonna keep the character rig separate and when we want to animate them, we're basically going to reference them into one scene, animate them, and then, and then basically when you're when you're finished animating a weapon or a character, you have to export the animations into the engine, the game engine. And or basically, what's cool about referencing is, um, is that you can uh, have you can unload references, and like let's say here, I'll just give you an example here. Okay, so I have I have a blank scene here. I'm gonna go file, create reference. And in my in my reference here, uh, down at the bottom, there's this thing called uh, I'm gonna go use namespace as parent. And in here I'm gonna call this Leon, and I'm gonna go reference. It's gonna allow me to open up, <coughs> open up a scene file, and I'll open up Leon Kennedy. So now I've referenced in the Maya file Leon Kennedy. I can do anything I want with this, and um, as you can see here, it says Leon colon jacket, and uh, this this mesh is normally called jacket, but because I've referenced it in, it has the reference prefix Leon colon jacket. So then I can go, I'm going to reference in another thing here. Uh, actually, this one I'm going to change my reference name to, this one's going to be called weapon, or shotgun. And I'm going to reference it in. And we're going to do some a little bit of this later. So now I have the shotgun and Leon referenced into here. And if I go down to my reference editor, this is a reference editor. And in my reference editor, it shows me all the files I have referenced in this scene. And I can turn them off. Now the shotgun is not in the scene anymore. Or I can turn it back on. So let's say I had, let's say I had Leon referenced in here. He was skinned. He was uh, with controls and everything. And then I reference in the gun. It was skinned to controls and everything. I can put the gun in his hand, animate everything, and then I can turn off the shotgun, export the animations for this character, 
then I can turn off Leon and export the animations for the gun. So you have to export animations separately per character, right? But you reference them in, but these are used together. He's going to use the gun together with his, <coughs> and you have to animate them together too. <coughs> so you need a way to animate them in a scene, but then quickly uh, get rid of it so you can export the animations and then make it come back wherever you want. Does that kind of make sense a little bit? Yeah, sure. Why wouldn't you just import them in because you, because you can't like get rid of them and bring them back as quickly? Yeah, importing importing's like a permanent thing. Once you import something, it's in. Okay. You have to literally go in and like this. What this does is, if you import something, it imports everything in that scene into the scene file. So if you want to remove it, you have to go find every single thing that it's imported and remove it. What this does, referencing keeps track of all those things. And by just clicking one check mark, it's every single thing that's in that scene is gone. Okay. It's pretty cool. And so if you change it, like say the gun gets rigged or anything, and then you go in and you change the way the rig works, is it changing the original file or is it just changing the that's, reference? That's the thing. This this file that I've referenced these these scene files in, these are the actual scene files. If I change stuff in these files, th this this file here is just like a it's like a host or not a host file. It's like you're hosting those files. Okay. It's like this is just like an empty scene where these files are being looked at or held. But if I were to close this, if I were to save this scene, close this scene, and then open up just the shotgun file and add something to that rig and then save it and then open this scene back up, all those new changes would be pulled into here. So that's another reason why you do it is so that if you need to make any rig updates or changes, all you have to do, so this would be like the type of file that you would animate in. And um, if you make any rigging updates, all you have to do is reopen your animation file and since it's just referencing these other files, any changes you do to the rig automatically updates in your animation file. Real time, like you don't have to like reload them or rerun them or anything? No, yeah, real time. So, let's do something here. Something like kind of. So, when you go then to export the animation, you just export the animation to the scene and then export any of the references? Um, no, when you're exporting animation, you just. Export an animation. Uh, that's really weird. It's weird. One of the problems that Maya has is this. This says shotgun colon gun when I reference this in. But what I need to do is I need that to be a namespace. That's what it is. Okay. I don't I don't need this colon sometimes. That's a special character. And sometimes in game engines, uh, game engines don't like special characters. And so there we go. I uncheck the use namespace, call this shotgun. And now when I reference it, it should use yeah, there we go. Now it uses an underscore. An underscore is not a special character. It's just a uh, it's just like uh, any other key on the keyboard, any other like letter. And so I, I like to use underscores to separate my prefixes, my referencing prefixes. We're going to do this all again. I just wanted to give you guys kind of a heads up over it. OK, so let's go ahead and open on Leon. Let's get to rigging. So usually when I open up a character for the first time, uh, I'm just going to check out what I have to work with here. Um, looks like his hands are separate from his body. And then he has uh, this patch back here, which, I mean, um, I could combine it and then 
weld the vertices if I wanted to, but I'm, I'm just not going to do that right now. So let's go ahead and start building this guy's skeleton. So when I build this guy's skeleton, I'm going to space bar, hit space bar a couple times, go into my front view, <coughs> and I'm just going to go ahead and start with the spine. And uh, one of the things that I've done here is uh, when, you, when you're when you working in a first-person shooter type game, um, your character is going to be running around in the game. And, or this this will be running around in the game. And you'll be looking at, you know, again, something like this. And it's really important that you move your object or your, your character up off the ground and you measure it. <coughs> you measure it. So he's about, he works with the other units in your game. Because programmers are going to import this into your game. And it's, it's real important that it's, so what I've done is, I've actually, these units are feet. I made these units feet. And usually, like, I like, when I'm doing, like, males in the game, I usually, like, make them about six feet tall. And um, so this guy is about six feet tall. And the way I did that was I just went create, measure tools, uh, distance tool. And you guys have done this before. And each unit here is a foot. And I set that in my Windows Settings and Preferences, Preferences, Settings, Working Units were set to feet. So now each one of these units is a feet. So if I use my measure tool, I count up one, two, three, four, five, six feet. This tells me that this is six feet tall. So what I've done was I moved Leon to where I guessed where his head was. And I just thought, okay, well the top of his head will be there, that's six feet. And I just kind of moved, it doesn't have to be perfect, but I just kind of moved it, you know, relatively into a position where he would be six feet tall. <coughs> and uh, another thing that, uh, that you do when you're making a first person character rig is, uh, you make a camera and you guys don't have to do this right now <coughs> but this camera is usually up about it's, it's wherever wherever you want the camera but like this camera will be the same camera that's in game whatever it is and so I usually like move this camera up and then uh, I can change I can change my one of my panels to camera one and I can see what my camera is seeing so if you were going to animate this this character um, you would use this camera to try and like um, you would you would want to match up the Maya camera with the in-game camera if that makes sense so that when you're animating you uh, and the programmer will give you the units for how high you should move the camera and wherever. And you work with the programmer on where exactly you want the camera to be. Just so when you're animating, you're animating from a first person camera. Or, yeah. <coughs> and you're seeing what the, you're animating and seeing what the player will actually see when he sees the hands and stuff. Anyway, we can delete that camera for now because we're not really animating. Okay. I'm just trying to give you guys kind of some perspective here. Okay, let's go ahead and let's start rigging this guy. So in the front view, in the front view here, um, I don't really know where his hips are or his legs are or anything like that. So all I'm going to do is <coughs> I'm going to go ahead and create my first joint. And 
And I think somebody told me about some options in here last time. Ariel, I think it was you, where I could, like, create them to where they stayed the same size or something like that. Yeah, so if you double click on your joint, joint tool, you go down to variable bone radius settings, turn it off, all your joints should be the same size. So you don't have that, like, multi-size joint issue anymore. <coughs> and all I'm going to do is, I'm going to create my first bone here at 0, 0, 0. And I'm just going to click on my snap to grid tool magnet tool at the top and I'm just going to click on 0 0 0 and that joint is a little small for what I want to be doing so I'm just going to scale it up to scale it up you go uh, display animation joint size and I'm just going to scale that to about 4 And that's our first joint. I just kind of clicked away from my, my joint creation tool and I have a joint there. So what I'm going to do now is in my front view, before I like start parenting these joints, I'm just going to duplicate this joint. This is how I like to do stuff. I like to just go ahead and I'm going to hit W on the keyboard. And I'm going to go Control D. And I'm just going to move this joint up. I'm going to take off my grid snap. And I'm just going to move up this joint. And this joint I'm going to stick at the bottom of the rib cage, kind of in the sternum. I guess you could call it the sternum. So right at the, I mean, sorry, uh, yeah, bottom of the rib cage. And then you're not really going to see much else going on here, but I'll just go ahead and make another joint. So Control D. And this joint I'm just going to go ahead and put. Um, go ahead and put this one here. That's fine. Okay. And then uh, the next joint, so I'm putting, I put that kind of at the, the mid, uh, mid to lower, yeah, belly button, sure. And then I'm going to duplicate that joint, and this joint I'm going to put this will be our top spine joint. So I've got four joints so far. I've got one at zero, 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 and then three, three in the for the uh, for the spine. And now we need to go ahead and create a clavicle joint. So I'm just going to duplicate this joint. Control D move it over to the clavicle and I'm going to space bar out here or actually I'm not going to adjust these I'm going to stay in my front view for now so I'm just going to move this over to the clavicle and then duplicate it put another one in the shoulder and then we'll do another one in the elbow hey man and then duplicate another one, and we'll put another one in the hand. Like right where the hand meets the shirt. So I'll go ahead and highlight these so you can see kind of where I put them. I mean, you can copy like like nerves controls and stuff like that, but um, the problem is is like this skeleton or this this me this uh, character is completely different than like it's just and it's start even starting in a different pose than all the other characters that we work with. Everything's like completely different, so it's like. Yeah, you can import a skeleton and move some joints around and stuff like that, but 
I don't know. I just find it's better just to go ahead and just create a new joint. It doesn't take that long. I mean. Oh, cool. Oh, cool. Um, okay, so I'm looking at this in my front view, and I need to move down my elbow joint and my wrist joint just a tad. So they're kind of centered in the... Uh, centered in the arm here. And I guess I could move my clavicle up a little bit. I mean, it doesn't really matter. You're not going to like really see it, but um, okay, so so this is kind of what I have so far. I've got a lower joint here, sternum, upper spine, clavicle, shoulder, elbow, and wrist. And uh, I guess we can go ahead and we can create a finger if we wanted to. So I'm just going to duplicate that and move a finger over. And we'll just, uh, when we do the fingers, we'll just duplicate all that other stuff. Okay, so now I'm going to go into my perspective view. And in my perspective view, I want to go ahead and work in uh, x-ray joints mode. And uh, also x-ray. So I can see, and you go to shading, x-ray, or x-ray joints. And... Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to look at these joints here and um, let's see, I'm looking at my shoulder and my shoulder joint is a little bit forward from where I probably want it. So I'm just going to grab my shoulder joint and just pull it back a little bit so it's more centered in the arm. Are more centered in the shoulder. And then I want to grab my elbow. And I'm just going to pull my elbow back to where it's more... It's more kind of towards the back of the arm. But not all the way back. The wrist looks fine. The finger looks fine. And now I definitely want some curvature in my spine here. We're really not going to see a whole lot of spine stuff, but... I'll just go ahead and do it anyway. Uh, so the way we'll do that is we'll just pull this sternum joint. We'll just pull this forward a little bit so there's a little bit of a curve in the spine. And then obviously we need to move our clavicle forward. I'm going to grab the clavicle, pull it forward, and again, this doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, I don't even know where his, he doesn't even have a chest mesh, so we're just pulling the clavicle forward to just sort of simulate what a, a normal skeleton would do. So now I can go ahead and I can start uh, naming and parenting some of these joints that I have in here. And I'm just going to start with the wrist. And this one's going to be uh, capital L. Uh, we can just call it wrist. And then I'm going to parent that to the elbow. So I'm just going to pull uh, while, while that joint was selected. I shift select the elbow joint and hit P in the parents. Then I'm going to name that joint L elbow <coughs> and then I'm going to continue parenting that and I'm going to parent all these and it's going to be L shoulder L clavicle and this will be spine 1 or spine 1 2 3 and then the joint on the ground will be just call that main. So L clavicle. Sp 
find three. Let's find two and one. And then I'll parent spine one to main. So I'll leave these uh, joints up for a second here. You can see what we got going on here. And if you want, you can start building out the hand, building out the fingers in the hand. start with the hand here and uh, my joints are a little bit big for these fingers so um, I uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just shrink these so I'm gonna go display animation joint size and I'm gonna shrink these to about two and then I don't really like working in x-ray mode when I'm doing fingers so I'm just going to hit 4 to go to wireframe. You guys can do whatever you want. And I'm just going to make this the knuckle for the pointer. I'm just going to put this one in the knuckle. And then duplicate it, move it to the knuckle in the middle. Duplicate it again, make the other knuckle, and I'm not doing anything new here, I'm just <coughs> making fingers just like we've made on all of our other skeletons. Make sure it's good. Finish with those knuckles. I'm just going to select them all. Control D. And then move these into place. the last 
parts of the fingers. Start with the thumb. that thumb's got an extra joint in there. Once you're done uh, building all the joints in your fingers, you can uh, name them and then parent them. And uh, I'm just going to call this uh, L thumb uh, one, two, three, L pointer one, two, three, L middle one, two, three, L ring one, two, three, and L pinky one, two, three. So I've named all my fingers. I'm just going to go ahead and parent them. I'm going to parent the knuckles to the wrists.
And somebody said that they found like an auto joint orient tool. Yeah. Oh, really? Something. Let's take a look at this tool and see how it works. So, if we were doing our joint orients Go here. Go ahead and do it from the, uh, the main joint. Yeah. So we point every V. So we point all the, the, the Vs forward, all the Xs down the chain. Okay, cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select my main joint. I'm going to click on select by component type. Then select the question mark. And it shows <coughs> all my joint orients here. You shouldn't have to. I just wanted to see them though. Right. So then you said uh, you said X, Z, and yeah. Y. Yeah. It doesn't point them down the chain though. You have to select the, uh, the object, an object mode. Oh, oh really? Yeah. So if I select the joint. Yeah, just like those. Ah, oh, look at that. That's slick. So you can select each finger and go apply. And it points it down the chain. It's pointing to the V's up. Well, what? Y is up. Oh, maybe you just set Y. We need Y's up. Yeah. Okay. So you select the finger and you change secondary axis, I guess, yeah. to Y and this to Z and hit apply. No, that's not yeah, it. It's pointing the Y out. Yeah, what's, what's most important is the, is the X. The way you can fix that is if you just duplicate your pinky joint and move it to like the front of your finger and then parent it. We're going to delete these joints and then you can orient it. Cool. So I'm just going to do that for each of my fingers. I'm going to select all the pinky or all the. Uh, and it's cool because like if you want this. Like this prime joint to be pointed, like or like like the fingers secondary axis to be pointed differently than the, the spine. Yeah. Then you can do that. All right, so I'm gonna select all the last joints on my fingers, duplicate them, move them down to the tips of my fingers, so they're coming out of the tips of my fingers, so it knows where point them when orienting the joints. And then I'm going to reparent them. I'm going to select them, parent them to the, the joints above them as opposed to the joint. Then I'll select my fingers again. I wonder if I can do multiple fingers at the same time. Select all my fingers. Apply. Yep, and you can do multiple fingers at the same time. And then you go through and delete your end joints. And now all of my fingers are oriented perfectly. That's fantastic. That took two seconds. And I should be able to select all my knuckles. Go edit, select hierarchy. Oh, it doesn't do the thumb the way I want it, though. What's that about? Thumb yeah, the thumb needs to be on a different... Yeah, so the thumb needs to rotate 
so on the so I go skeleton joint orient to the secondary axis. Yeah. So I switch these. I'm just gonna, I don't know what, how to do that, so I'm just gonna, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna handy the thumb. So if I look at these, Z is down, X is across. So I want Z to be facing in the direction that it curls. So I'm going to select all my joint orients here. And I can rotate them. Now, when I select all the hierarchy, rotate, that's what we want. All I did was, uh, well, I oriented them all the same, uh -huh. so they were they were all. Uh, <coughs> They're all oriented now, but with the thumb, all I did was I went in and, okay, so when I selected a finger here, I selected one finger, and then I checked my joint orients here, and I noticed the Z's were pointing down. So I wanted the bottoms of the thumb, I wanted the Z's to be coming out the bottoms of the thumb. So all I did was I selected my, I selected the joints, and then I rotated the disease coming out the bottom of the thumb. And oh you can okay. select all the joint orients. You can rotate them, multiple joint orients at one time. So if you shift select these, you can rotate them all at the same time. If I just rotated them like 45 degrees. That joint orient tool saves a lot of time. Yeah. That is seriously slick. I mean, it, it just basically oriented my entire body. You know what? Actually, it didn't do. You have to do. The elbow. Right? Yeah, you gotta the do elbow. the elbow. Yeah. Now, if I do this, now if I do the elbow, I need. Yeah, I need to unparent this. Well, the problem is if I unparent that, it's not gonna know where. I figured since it's elbow being what it is, you have to just handle it back. Now you could unparent all the knuckles. I unparented the knuckles and then selected this and went skeleton orient joint. There it goes. So now that's that's oriented. And then since I you can just go ahead and do 
I think you just do the whole skeleton, couldn't you? Like the skeleton? Yeah, just select now that the since we already did our hands, just select the bottom part of the skeleton and now the whole thing's oriented. Yeah, perfectly. That is unreal. Did you guys get that? So if you unparent okay, since we already did we oriented our knuckles. Um, if you select you unparent your knuckles from your hand then select your bottom joint, or the, the very first joint, and then do the orient joint tool, and it orients the entire skeleton other than the hands. And then reparent your... Wait, you have to turn the other way to orient the other reset? Uh, no, I, I just, I, I hit reset, and then uh, I, the secondary axis world orientation, I changed to Z, so I have X, Y, and Z. And so now all my joints are oriented. I didn't have to set, uh, the only ones I set manually were the thumb. Which is really cool. That saves a lot of time. So now I'm just going to reparent my fingers now. And I've named and oriented my skeleton. Everybody go ahead and save your scenes. today by the way. Yeah. You can I move joints inside skin really slick. Not only that, but you can move it works without anything being away from it. So you don't have to keep on doing things like you can right. grab the tool and go and move time or move time. You, know, you can do all kinds of stuff now while stuff skins. You never used to be able to do that. You can like I can remove bones from skin and add new bones into the skin. I can like mirror a skeleton and then like like if like today some kid like he, he, he built a skeleton he built the entire skeleton and it was like off right because he didn't mirror it and I it was skinned already he'd done a bunch of work so I literally removed half the skeleton while it was skinned mirrored the skeleton all while it was skinned and copied the weights and it worked awesome it's unreal that's that's great yeah there you guys are just messy. Actually, the, mesh wasn't do? the mesh wasn't symmetrical. I had to chop the mesh in half and parent it and mirror it. So you, you, cut, you, you cut everything off on the, the negative X and you copied everything. Yeah, it was funny. And it was really great. Yeah. All right, so let's keep moving here. Okay, so uh, we've got half a skeleton. Uh, who knows what to do now? Well, we need to mirror, mirror? the s skeleton. So select the clavicle, skeleton, mirror joint option box, and we are going to search for capital L and change that with capital R and change your mirror across axis to YZ and mirror. And everybody always asks me, do we mirror by um, orientation or by behavior? And the answer is by behavior, because as you can see, when I rotate these clavicles now, you want to be able to select, select the shoulders and have him, when you do one rotate, he flies. What's that? It's not inside the hand. It's not inside the hand? Woo! Oh no! It's not symmetrical. The mesh is not symmetrical. Okay, so this is rigging rigging 101. Uh, <laughs> 
this is one of the problems you're going to have to face <laughs> as a rigger, uh, where you are going to find a lot of mistakes that modelers do, and it is your job to correct those mistakes. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and correct this mistake. Uh, I'm just going to turn off our skeleton. We'll go show, turn off joints. Since the arm is the only thing that's really jacked up here, actually, you know what? It might be easier for us just to cut. Okay, so let's do this. We'll leave this patch the way it is because it's all messed up anyway. So I'm select the jacket and go to your front view. So go into your front view, select your jacket, now you're going to right click on the jacket and go to face, make sure your skeleton is hidden, so go show, joints, and you're going to select, what's that? Oh, I don't know, it should be fine. You're going to select half of this mesh. So. Select it all the way to the grid line here, and then hit delete. And we want to go ahead and delete these hands too. Now, is it the is it the body that's off, or is it just the hands? Well, it's like when you elbow down, it's pretty off. All right. So it's like a whole thing is kind of. It looks like what I look like. What it looks like to me is the uh, the entire. So, delete half the mesh. Go ahead and delete that hand, too. You can easily mirror the hands. Ah. Make sure you're, when you delete the hands, right-click, face, delete the faces of the hands, because it's merged with the other hand. figure it out. Okay, so now uh, what we need to do here is I'm looking at this and it looks like some of the jacket here has spilled over the grid here. So I'm just going to zoom in here, right click this jacket, go to vertex, select these vertices, turn on my grid snap and snap these to the grid. And when I snap them to the grid, they don't all line up with the grid. So I'm going to double click my move tool and go down to, it says there's an option in here that says retain component spacing. Click that and now when you snap it, it'll snap perfectly. So then you want to select all the verts in the middle of this guy and now snap them all to zero, zero, zero. Double click the double click the move tool, and then down at the bottom there's uh, there it says move snap settings. There's something called retain component spacing. Uncheck that. Make sure your grid snap is on, and go snap it to the to the grid. So I'm not going to worry about that back piece for now. So first things first, let's go ahead and mirror this hand. So I'm going to select the hand, and I'm going to go Control D to duplicate it. So Control D. And since the pivot point for the hand is at 0, 0, 0, I just go over to my scale X. 
and change that to negative 1. When you change that to negative 1, it puts the duplicate on the opposite side of the grid where it was at. So now we have a hand exactly on the opposite side of the grid where that was. And now we are going to do the same thing with the shirt. So if you select half of the shirt and go control D and then negative X one, it copies the shirt over exactly the way we want it. You know, you know, be better is just to what you do is you just e exactly you just select the verts and then hold V and snap that vert to the edges. We're just going to move this these little ends over, not stretch the texture too much. Okay, so now what we want to do is, since we've copied this mesh over, um, we want to go ahead and um, let's go ahead and we want to merge this shirt together. So select both of the shirts and go spacebar mesh combine. now it's combined. But you've got a problem here. Now that we've mirrored it, if you right click vertex on the center vert, your vertices are not connected. So what we need to do is we need to go down all of the center verts here and there's a quick way to do this actually. If you just go to your front view, go into vert mode and select all these vertices in the center and then make sure you're in polygons or actually you don't have to be in polygons. If you click on polygons tab there is a tool called merge vertices. You click that it's going to merge all your verts. It's called merge vertices. So now all of our vertices are merged. I was thinking about that. Um, I wouldn't worry about it. Let's, let's leave the hands separate for now. Yeah. So, uh, Alan just noticed something. Um, he now has two zippers on his jacket, which isn't good, but that's no problem for us. Right click on one of the zippers. Which one are we keeping, right or left zipper? Right or left. Why can't he just be a boss and have both? Because he's right on the right. Yeah. Moves on the right. All right, so let's keep, <laughs> let's delete the left. So, click on your mesh, right click face. Click one face on the zipper, and uh, if you hold shift and click greater than a couple times, and then click the zipper and do the same thing, it's going to select all the faces for that zipper, hit delete, lo and behold, jacket with one zipper. Problem solved. <laughs> Uh, I just you hit uh, dupl duplicate it, Control D, 
and then scale in negative x, or scale in x negative 1. So now if we turn our joints back on, we have perfectly mirrored mesh and joints problem solved. And everybody save your scene files. Okay. Yep. Very easy to solve. Um, what you do is you just mine were off too. They were off like a little bit. All you do is you just select a vert, select one of the verts, hold V, and snap it to the edge. And each one of those has another vert that it can be snapped to that matches up perfectly. I have no clue. Why would they build a mesh that is not connected? I think rigging, uh, taking a rigging class is, is really good for like character modelers. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because they yeah. get to see what the next stage goes through after. Shows me exactly how to piss off the riggers. Nice. <laughs> All right, let's skin this thing. Yeah. All right, so uh, we want to go ahead and um, actually, yeah, let's go ahead and merge the hands. Why not? So select both hands and go spacebar, mesh, combine. And now select the hands, shift select the shirt, and shift select the skeleton. And then go skin, bind skin, smooth bind option box. And you want to change normalized weights to interactive. Uncheck allow multiple bind poses. Uncheck remove unused influences and then hit bind. So I'm just going to control Z a couple times before I skinned it. Shift select that back piece and go skin, bind, skin, smooth bind. Now the back piece is skinned.
All right, so uh, looking at this, I, you know, before I start painting any weights or anything, um, I just like to just kind of test it out and see how it's working. It seems to be working okay. When you're looking at when you're working on a first-person character, realistically, the only things you're super concerned with is pretty much the shoulder down. So this stuff actually looks pretty good. Um, you know, I, I'm just gonna go ahead and start with the shoulder because the clavicle looks like it's, this is a jacket and actually it's reacting pretty well, just the way it is, it just looks good. So I'm just gonna do all painting with this. I'm gonna select my jacket, go into animation, double click on my paint skin weights tool. And then I'm going to go ahead and start with the left shoulder. Wherever that is. And uh, as you guys probably remember, uh, if you hold B and left click drag left and right, you can scale up or down your paintbrush. And all I'm going to do different on this shoulder is basically paint, paint the shoulder so the shoulder actually rotates when the shoulder rotates. So I'm just going to follow, follow the edge loops here make sure that that's all painted in Blake do you need a file you hand me your uh what happened? Did you my and when I loaded uh, my when I loaded my model back up my skeleton was all like upside down. Yeah, yeah sure. So I'm gonna get one for me and just put it in the car so so we can keep following along. Oh y'all. Mayas are connected, huh? Apparently they both crashed at the same time. Whoa, that's crazy. Alright, where do you want me to put this? Um just drop it anywhere in there. So when you open this folder, That's this cool. is the file. Got it. Stick it in here. Wow. It's like it's created a USB drive that I have in a blue memory. Okay.
duplicate the hand also by duplicating the entire hand? Yeah. All right, you guys. So all I'm doing here, I'm just everything else looks great on this. I'm just doing the shoulder, making sure that the shoulder is solid white from the shoulder all the way down to the upper. Uh, we don't want to touch anything in the elbow. We just sort of want the uh, upper arm slash bicep to sort of fade off into the elbow. So I'm going to shift down to my elbow, and then I need to paint this from the top of the forearm all the way down to the bottom of the shirt. Let's go ahead and give that a quick test. Clavicle looks good. Yeah. The shoulder looks a lot better now. Let's move on to doing the hands and the fingers. So I'm just going to select my hand, double click on the paint skin waste tool. Find my left hand. and then just start painting make sure that the hand the wrist joint controls big spot on the top of the hand And then just move down the fingers one by one, starting with the knuckle. And then paint the knuckle. I love doing fingers because it just 
feels like it just takes forever. It just takes forever. It's really annoying. If you paint on edge loops when you're doing fingers, it seems to speed it up. Because you have to focus all on the edge loops. Finger number one. Finger number two. Hey right, you guys, let's keep going here. Got to finish this up.
when you're finished with your fingers, you need to test your fingers. Make sure that they curl. So I noticed that when I was rotating my shoulder, some of the weighting from the collar and stuff was affected. So I'm just going to go back through and paint out some of this weighting. The shoulder does not need to affect all this stuff. Also on the back patch, you want to paint out any weights that's uh, that are affecting the in the shoulder. The shoulder does not need to pull back patch stuff. So okay, I've added in some controls here. I uh, I created uh, three circles, or I've created uh, these circle curves, and um, basically uh, you just create a curve and then V snap it to the joints. So you want one to the wrist joint, rotate it 90 degrees. And then you want three for the spine. And then you want one on the clavicle. And you can create one of them and then just duplicate it to make the other.
So, let's see. Yeah, I also created the locator for the elbow. What I did uh, in the animation, click on the animation tab, there's a locator. You click it, it'll appear at zero, zero, zero. V snap that to the elbow. So hold V, move it to the elbow, move it out in space a little bit, and then scale it down. Yeah, so, so the clavicle. So I just snapped. Oh, this one. This one snapped to the top, the upper spine. And this clavicle one, I just snapped it to the clavicle and then just kind of rotated it to where it would be easiest for an animator to grab. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys how to mirror all the ones over to the other side, just like you mirror everything else. So you just go ahead and shift select the elbow control, shift select the wrist control, and shift select the clavicle control. And then I want you to group these, so control G. And then in with the group selected, scale X and negative 1. And it should copy those. Oh, wait, you want to duplicate the group. I'm sorry. Yeah. Duplicate the group. Control D. And then scale those a negative one. So now you have all your controls flipped over on the other side. Now we need to uh, freeze transformations on all these. So select all your controls. And then go modify freeze transformations. And you can scale the, uh, the locators will snap back up to their regular height or uh, regular scale, you can just scale those down again. And then with the locators, you can uh, lock and hide the scale. So just right uh, click on scale in the channel box, right click it, and then just go lock and hide select. It. Now let's go ahead and add some controls. So uh, double click on your IK, and you want to change this from IK SC solver to IK RP solver. And then you want to create an IK from the shoulder to the wrist. So we'll do one from the shoulder to the wrist. And then create another IK from the wrist to the middle finger knuckle. Then 
drag select over the middle finger knuckle IK. Drag select over the uh, wrist IK. And hit P to parent. Then select the wrist IK. Group it. Control G. And hit insert to move the pivot. G snap that pivot to the wrist. Hit insert again to set it. Then with that group selected, shift select the arm control and hit P to parent. Now you should have an arm control. Now to create the elbow, select the elbow locator, shift select the wrist IK, and go constrain pull vector. And now the elbow should follow the locator. Select the locator. Shift select the wrist IK. And go constrain pull vector. You get that? Yeah. Alright. Now we'll do the same thing for the other arm. Create an IK from the shoulder to the wrist. Then create an IK from the wrist to the top middle finger knuckle. Select the middle finger knuckle IK. Shift select the wrist IK. Hit P to parent. Then select the wrist IK. Group it. Control G. Hit insert to move the pivot of the group. G snap that pivot to the wrist. Hit insert again. And then with that group selected, shift select the control and hit P. And then lastly do the elbow control by selecting the locator. Shift select the wrist IK and go constrain pull vector. Oh. Uh, one thing that we forgot to do is mirror our Mirror our skin waves. No, we just did one arm, one side. Yeah. Hey, Blake. Yo. Remember to mirror your skin waves. Okay. Awesome. Mirror your skin waves. Click your mesh. Double click on the paint skin waves tool. Find the uh everybody saved. Yeah, everybody saved. Yeah. Find the clavicle and go skin. Edit smooth skin. Mirror skin weights. Make sure YZ is selected. And hit apply. And that will mirror our skin weights. Perfectly. And save us a lot of time. Make sure to uh, mirror the skin weights on the... Oh, that doesn't matter. Screw that.
The last step for the controls is to constrain the circles to the joints. Very easy to do. You just select the controller, shift select the joint, constrain, parent. Make sure maintain offset is on in your parent constraint. Apply. And now that rotates the skeleton. Select the control, select the skeleton, constrain, control, skeleton, constrain, control, skeleton, constrain. Did your shoulder freak out? Yeah. Yeah. Mine's freaking out too. Um. Um, you can Alright, so the way you fix it is um, if you go into your hypergraph hierarchy, so go select that controller and then go into your window hypergraph hierarchy and then hit F and you'll see here, you'll see you have the ones uh, selected here, mine's called nerve circle whatever, select both of those. There's two of them, which are both of the uh, the clavicles, and hit Shift key, and that's going to unparent them out of that mirrored group. And then if you just select the clavicle, Shift select your joint constrained parent, should work just fine. So let's um, let's finish up here today with this, and uh, we'll start on the weapon next time. Good job, Blake, for keeping up. <laughs> Everybody else, you failed. Just kidding.